All right, Team USA is qualified for the 2020 Olympics, which, though seemingly a formality, is a result of their FIBA, FIBA World Cup performance. Now they get set for the knockout round. Steve, who are they playing? France, which is near Rhode Island. We learned that last night. Tough game coming. Brian Windhorst joins us now from China. And Brian, a wise man I know named Ryan Marcillo taught me to always start with the fun. We'll get to France and the USA. Let's start with what America needs to know. <laughs> hypothetically, hypothetically, if you were able to see the Browns, how were you able to do it and was it worth it? Hypothetically. I'm not saying that I committed fraud. Uh-huh. But I'm not saying that I didn't commit fraud. I did get to watch it, and I went to bed at 4 a.m. when it was 29 to 13 and woke up and saw the final score. Um, I don't know what you're talking about otherwise, though. Fair enough. Let's move to the business at hand. The knockout round is here, and France, or as Stanford Steve would call them, France, as a threat. You believe they're real. Why? Yeah, Le Bleu. Um, you know, they have really good guards. In fact, they're the most probably like Team USA uh, of any team in this tournament. They, they rely on their guards, and they have a couple of NBA-quality perimeter players and big men. So you've got Nick Batum out there. You've got Evan Fournier. Evan Fournier, I know he's sort of a middle middling player with the Magic. He's been killing it in this tournament. He's practically the leading scorer in the whole event. They are great on pick and roll, and they have the two-time NBA defensive player, the Arudi Gobert, in the middle. So they are a dangerous team. I would almost argue that this is maybe the most important game the U.S. is going to play in this tournament. If they get past this team, there's a lot of advantages on the other teams they have left in the tournament. This is going to be a brutally difficult game, and they know it. Interesting. Uh, we will file all this away. Do not commit any more crimes, in, uh, or, or hypothetically, don't commit any more crimes. I don't know what you're talking about. No, exactly. I have no uh, yeah. Lost in translation. No I, idea. I, yeah, I think the satellite. Something's wrong with this. We've lost Brian. We've lost him. Okay. Son My of a gun. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Scott. Cam Newton and the Panthers take on Tampa Bay Thursday. Short weeks begin. Cam didn't have his best game Sunday. Christian McCaffrey continues to be a machine both in fantasy and in reality. Cam wondering if, if Nord might have, might have picked him up. Pick him up. He's probably gone. I think Coach got C-Mac up for fantasy this week. I think he picked <laughs> C-Mac for fantasy. I think that's what it is. Dog on Norv to pick C-Mac for fantasy, man. Should have just I, I should have went over and, and, and seen who he was drafting in his in his league. You know, that's probably why we ain't doing no deep passes, right? Because he ain't pick me for his quarterback. Nah, it's all making sense. Golly. Pick him up. Stanford Steve is here. He heckles me relentlessly. Mr. About... Fantasy right here. It's, it's been a stunning transformation. You frequently hear us yell about players that yep. maybe you don't have on your fantasy team. Pick them up. Mac McCaffrey went one in a lot of drafts. Obviously, he's unavailable. He's owned and all. Yeah, but you had ways. first picks in a draft, right? You took him. I took uh, Alvin Kamara because he told me to. Oh, all right. Probably four, four leagues. Okay. Four. Oh, I, I lost all four games. So the waiver wire activity is very, very. Uh, yeah, we got to get your expertise here. Yeah, what do we got? Two guys dominated last week. One guy finished third in receivers, and one guy finished fifth. Who, 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 more, more sustainable going forward. Who you like better? Who are you picking up? John Ross. Here's why. Why? Number one, I don't know how much Baltimore is throwing the ball week to week. I don't know. Brown, I, he only was on the field for 12 plays, and you can't expect the guy to score on bombs every time that he is on the field. Okay. In Ross's case, he's as fast as anybody on the field. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, when Green comes back, and it, now he's not going to get those every game either. <laughs> but this is a guy we were waiting to take the leap out of Washington, and it looks like he has. I think of the two, I think Ross is a guy who's more likely to approach that again moving forward. Maybe Holly was just more efficient. Could be that, too. That. Then you can pick him up. How about running backs? All right. Always tough to find. What are they this, called? Is, this is PPR League. By the way, if you're not in a PPR League, I don't even know what you're doing, and I don't care. <laughs> what, what, what do they call the guy that's behind the guy? The hand. Oh, the handcuff. Handcuff. There you go. That's Malcolm Brown, right? Yep. Back up to uh, Gurley. I don't know. Gurley's not getting goal line carries. That that's scares so, look, This is easy. Adrian what Peterson's in for Geis because Geis got hurt again. He, he didn't, didn't even play last I week. I understand. That was a big point of, uh, of contention there for Who Washington. Brown. Because, look, 
And number one, the Rams, really? off, the Rams offense week in and week out is going to have opportunities. And if this guy's going to be a goal line vulture, <laughs> I mean, and look, is he going to score two touchdowns every week? Probably not. But if Gurley's knee isn't right, and, and we're all going to wonder until we have compelling evidence otherwise, yeah. then that's a guy you want. That, that Rams offense is, is likely to score a lot of Redskins, points. Redskins, though. Yeah, they were pretty good. A little fishy Ooh, yeah, this that, week. Who fishy? fishy? Who fishy? <laughs> Washington's fishy. And the best position on the field. Oh, yeah. Most balanced rookie out there, Hawkinson. But the way the Raiders are slinging it. Waller, you're yeah. on Waller. Waller. Here's Pick him Waller. up. Hawkinson was awesome. Okay, had the best. Had the, he had, is had, awesome. He had, I understand that. That's yeah. a good point. Not was, is. Yeah. But I believe that Waller is a, is a complete matchup nightmare. You saw it throughout this game on Monday night. And I think that he's more likely to be a guy that gets featured in their offense week in and week out. Where Hawkinson, like people call him the new Gronk. I mean, like, is that really what we're gonna? Is that really what we do? Because if you're if you're a white if you're a white shooter, you're Larry Bird. Like you're a big white tight end, so you're Gronk. Come on, don't be unfair to the guy. Plus, have you ever seen him twerk? Do they twerk in Iowa? I've never. I don't know that they don't. I just haven't seen it. I'm saying Waller. I think is going to be more mismatch. I don't think it's going to be as high a ceiling. I don't think it's going to be as low a floor. All right, but you need Minshew for that double quarterback. Yeah, I do. Let's keep that quiet until (laughs) waivers go through. And that was pick him up. Might need to pick up some help for secondary in Oakland. Josina Anderson reporting first round pick and starting safety. Jonathan Abram out of Mississippi State is going to seek a second opinion on the shoulder area as there's a possibility he could be headed to the IR. Good to be joined once again by Bob Stoops. He's got a new book. It's called No Excuses with Gene Wojciechowski, the uh, making of a football coach, of a head coach, I beg your pardon. And, Bob, first of all, uh, it's good to catch up. As I said, it's been too long. And I, I just – I love the look, man. You, you, you look relaxed. <laughs> you look like things good. Are you good? I look like I ought to be uh, captain of a fishing boat, right? I like that. Except get, I, yeah, get I don't it. know how to fish, though. <laughs> well, well, then, then you'd, be a lousy, you'd be a lousy charter captain. Hopefully the book's better. And from what I've seen, uh, it, it's got real, real interesting nuggets. I'm going to get to those in a minute. But I'm always interested, Bob, in, in why someone – who's got stories to tell decides that I'm motivated to share them. What was the impetus for this? You know, I was asked a lot, and I get asked a lot by a lot of uh, coaches from all different levels of football and even some other sports, uh, what was my path? And then how did we, uh, like, rejuvenate Oklahoma so fast to be back in national prominence, you know, winning the national title in our second year? And then also how we sustained it so consistently for 18 years and I thought well I just put it down Uh, this is how I live this is what I went through and especially at Oklahoma here's what our attitude and our thought process and how we went about rebuilding the program and did it so fast I found that particular part very interesting because you described that winning it in your second year you're 40 and that you had been about the chase and now the chase is over and how there's actually some negative to that. And so I wonder now, how you, how, what are you chasing now as you're, you know, nearly 20 years down the road? What's the chase? I'm chasing an XFL championship now. You see, sure. we got the Dallas Renegades right here, something different. You know, when I stepped away, this wasn't even a part of anything yet. And uh, it just sort of fit me. I wanted my own time and space when I stepped away. And after two years not on the sideline, I got a little too much time, so this was something to rejuvenate me a little bit and chase. I think it's going to be exciting and fun. Well, the cover of the book is, is you wearing that familiar o- OU visor, and, uh, and you see the team standing there with you. And you told us when you left, boy, Lincoln Riley, that he's going to be able to do it. And I think we all wondered, hey, he's pretty young. I don't know. You were right. What is, what's been your impression of, of, of the trajectory of his career and what OU's done in his time there? Now, Lincoln's awesome. I knew that was part of the reason I felt really comfortable being able to step out. I knew we'd be in great shape. We had a mature uh, team that could handle it with leadership, with Baker running it as the quarterback. So I I was really excited. I I said, you know what, I'm not going to miss the right time. And uh, Lincoln's a bright, intelligent, great football coach, great head coach, not just an offensive mind and really relates to the players in a, in a great, great way. You mentioned Baker. What, what, what has been your reaction to seeing 
him just soar into the stars. I mean, win a Heisman, go number one, and then obviously the first game for, for Cleveland didn't go the way they want, but, I mean, he's the guy that's not shy about expectation and whatever else. What do you make of what he's done thus far, Bob? He's the real deal. He, he's, you know, yeah. and I understand the last game didn't go great, but it's one game yep. out of a long season. He's a real leader. He's a real player. He's going to continue to do well, as will Kyler. These guys are, are great players, so I'm excited to watch their future. Really am. Well, now you're running a new race. You have a new challenge and a new chase, and, and, and I wish you the best with that. Bob, good to catch up. You be well, all right? Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me. Last time I came up there. Yeah. Didn't win last week. Yep. Well, not, did not. Uh, early leans. On Tuesday, yeah. we give you an indication. Uh, Stanford Steve and the Bear, the podcast, the picks coming out. People always interested Tomorrow. in those. Yep. And then Thursday, we have winners. You had a winning week last week. Yes. I had a winning week uh, last week. So just give folks an idea of some couple games that we got on the radar that could be on the list. Well, Scott, Sunday, you know, I, 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 I look for these as soon as they come out. And I, I throw them at you as soon as I find yeah. out. The first one that jumps off the board at me, because I watched them late Saturday night, just torch Stanford. USC is a four and a half point favorite at BYU. Mm. That smells really bad. Yeah. Really that, bad. That has a possibility to be on my list. And I'm just going to tell you, last week I didn't have the courage to give 10. I, I might. I, might. I'm, I'm, I mean, it could be a double digit week because that line reeks. Yes. But help me understand Colorado, a winner last week uh, against Nebraska. No they, look, they smashed Colorado State. They beat uh, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. They're playing Air Force. Yeah. They're at home. They're, they're given four. Huh? Only given four. Does that seem that seems a little low, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you smell something? Stinky. Yeah. I'm Stinky. Fishy. I'm fishy. Give me another one. Terps. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. The Terps are going to Temple. Yeah. Now this is weird. Uh, Temple this week, Iowa State and TCU. They're coming off bye weeks. Yep. You know, so they've only had one game. Yep. Not a lot of sample size right there. This Maryland should be given more, right? Temple did beat Maryland last uh, year down they in uh, down in College Park. So I mean, but this I, one's look, at the link. Yeah, this line terrifies me. Um, I, I, you know, if it weren't Maryland, I would be on Temple, but yeah. I, I'm just gonna leave it alone. Yeah, and then one more Temple. for you, uh, Middle Tennessee. You know how I feel about Murfreesboro. Be careful, Dukies going down there, laying less than a touchdown. Be Murfreesboro. Things get a little little spooky down there. They're like the only Power Five team besides Vandy to go to Murfreesboro. So. It's just some early leans. Just like it, like it weird. File them away. You never know. Maybe Thursday or Wednesday you'll hear those names.